right, go. Right, question A. The point A and B are position vectors given by that. I, this was really horrible to throw to throw in all of this trick stuff into this question, wasn't it? Didn't that mean? Yeah. Um, it's given that O A and O B are perpendicular. Brilliant. If they are perpendicular, that means that their scalar product is zero. Zero. So um, these two things have a zero scalar product. Three sine alpha, two cos alpha, minus one, dotted with two cos alpha, four sine alpha, three. That equals zero. That's um, that's a, a crucial thing. Um, is that right? Is that what we need to do? So if we work this out. We should get something out of this. Right, so 6 sine alpha cos alpha plus 8 cos alpha sine alpha minus 3 is equal to 0. Now, of course, uh, sine alpha cos alpha and cos alpha sine alpha are, are the same thing. So that's 14 cos alpha sine alpha minus 3 is 0. How are we going to solve something with cos alpha and sine alpha in it? Well, we know our trig identities. We know that 2 sine alpha cos alpha is sine 2 alpha. <laughs> so 14 lots of that is 7 sine 2 alpha minus 3 is 0, giving us sine 2 alpha is 3 over 7. Are we happy with how this has worked out so far? So if we do inverse, have we got a calculator for this? Inverse sine of 3 sevenths, and it gives us oh, tie us onto it with the knowledge calculator. Naught <laughs> point Hang on. Um, yeah, we want, they want it in degrees, don't they? Yes, we're in degrees. We need to be in degrees. It gives us uh, 12, 24, 25.4, doesn't it? Hang on, I'll do it. Is that right? 25.38. So alpha is a half of that, 12.7. But of course it wants the two smallest alphas that it can be. So we need to do the cat's diagram. <coughs> so we get the other one. If that's 25.38, that one is 180 minus that, which is 154.62. And we divide that by 2 as well to get the other value, which was 77.3. That, that's not what I mean when I write that there. You know what I mean with that. So that gives us 77.3 degrees as the two values degrees. Okay, that was part one. Part two said calculate the area of the triangle OAB for the smaller value of alpha from part one. So we've got, what have we got here? We've got um, two points, doesn't matter exactly where they are in space, but we are told that the, the, um, these, this angle here is a right angle. Is that what we, hang on, what have we got here? OA and OB are perpendicular. Can get the area of the triangle OAB with a smaller value of alpha? <coughs> yes. So we've got that this is uh, this is 90 degrees. This angle. <laughs> <laughs> We're in three dimensions. There we go. So it you know it's always going to look a little bit odd in three dimensions. <laughs> there we are. <laughs> All right. So so there's. There's, there's A and there's B and there's A. There's, there's our triangle. Um, so, <laughs> so what we need, if that's a right angle, 
then, then actually this triangle also, if we look at it from a different angle, is a triangle that's, that's doing that, isn't it? There's our right angle, there's A, there's O, there's B. And to work out the size of this triangle, we need base times height, because it's got a right angle there. So we need to do the length of OA, and we need to do the length of OB, and we need to do a half their product, which is just a really irritating amount of subbing numbers into a formula to work it out. It's just a really irritating bit of a question. Um, this is, where's the question paper? The square root of 9 sine squared alpha plus 4 cos squared alpha plus 1. And this is the square root of two, uh, 4 cos squared alpha plus 16 sine squared alpha plus 9. And we get those, and we multiply those answers together and times it by a half. It's just sticking it into the calculator and you come up with your answer, which is 4.22, or anything which rounds to 4.22. And it's, it's not particularly um, not a nice question, is it? Because it's just number crunching and it's just annoying. But that was it. Yes, that's that's that's.